Hello, I am going to take up the new topic which is vectors. Today we will get introduced into the vector algebra. Right, so by now we have learned in great detail about the physical quantity known as scalars. We know there are three types of physical quantities in nature which are scalars, vectors and tensors. There are three types of physical quantities, scalars, vectors and tensors. About scalars, we have learned in great detail by now and we know almost all the laws are applied to scalar quantities which are addition laws, subtraction laws and other laws and the physical quantity vector is unknown to us and about the tensor quantity we will learn when we go for our engineering courses in mechanical and aeronautical departments. Right? So, today we will focus on the physical quantity known as vectors. Right? Before proceeding, we may uh, like to recall the definition of scalars, we may like to recall the definition of scalars which says physical quantities physical quantities which can be explained, physical quantities which can be explained by using only a number, physical quantities which can be explained by using only a number only a number and suitable units and suitable units are called the scalars right physical quantities which can be explained by using only a number and physical units are called scalars uh, and suitable units are called scalars some of the examples are length mass time right for explaining scalar quantities we need only a magnitude Right? For explaining these quantities, we need only a magnitude. Right? And these scalars follow the addition law. They follow the addition law of algebra. They follow the addition law of algebra. Right? Now, let's define vectors. Let's define vectors. Vectors are defined as the physical quantities the physical quantities which can be explained physical quantities which can be explained by a direction by a direction besides besides number and suitable units Right? To explain the vector as a physical quantity, we need a number, a magnitude, and with the number we need a direction specified. Right? Some of the examples are force, force is a vector quantity, velocity, acceleration, all these are vector quantities. These are vector quantities. Right? And they follow and they follow the vector law of addition the vector law of addition they follow the vector law of addition right so in this way we define the two physical quantities scalars and vectors the physical quantities which can be explained using only a number and suitable units are called scalars and the physical quantities which can be explained by a direction as well besides the numbers and suitable units are called the vectors they follow the vector law of addition which we will discuss further and they follow the simple algebraic law of addition and subtraction. Right? Knowing this, if we proceed further and the quantity stems that we learn in our further engineering courses. Right? So, let's begin with vectors. Let's get into the details of vectors. First, beginning with the new physical quantity vectors, we would first want to know how we represent vectors. We may want to know the representation of vectors. Representation of vectors. Representation of vectors. A vector is represented by a line segment with an arrow pointing in the direction of 
pointing in the direction of the applied vector, right? Where this line segment, where this line segment, where this length L, length L is directly proportional to the magnitude of vector, right? A vector is uh, represented with a line segment with an arrow. This arrow is called the terminal point. Or head, and this is called the initial point or tail. Initial point or tail. A vector is represented in this manner where this length is directly proportional to the length is directly proportional to the magnitude of the vector. Right? For example, if I say, if I say, if we have a direction coordinate axis. So this is east, this is west, this is north, and this is south. If I say that one centimeter, one centimeter corresponds to say 20 kilometer per hour. If this is a velocity vector and I say one centimeter length corresponds to 20 kilometer per hour, then then if this length is three centimeter, if this length is three centimeter, then this will represent this will represent 60 km per hour, this will represent 60 km per hour due east. Due east. Right? Represented in this way, a vector represented in this way with an arrow pointing in the east direction whose length is 3 cm and I specified that 1 cm corresponds to 20 km per hour, so 3 cm will correspond to 60 km per hour and due east. Right? In this way, we uh, define a vector. In this way, we represent a vector. Now, there is something called equality of vectors, or I say equal vectors, equal vectors, equal vectors, vectors with same magnitude, vectors with same magnitude, and parallel in direction, vectors with same magnitude and parallel in direction are called equal vectors, are called equal vectors. For example, if this is a vector, if this is a vector whose magnitude is say uh, mod a, right, whose magnitude is say mod a, where this a denotes the vector a and Putting model as it specifies the magnitude of this vector a. It specifies the magnitude of this vector a. Say this is a vector, say this is a vector of magnitude mod a. If this is the vector a of magnitude mod a, and say this is a vector of magnitude mod b, this is a vector b of magnitude mod b. If these two lengths are equal, if these two lengths are equal, then vector a and vector b are equal, are said to be equal because the direction, the direction is parallel to each other, the direction is parallel to each other and the magnitude is same as each other, right? So the equal vectors means the vectors with same magnitude and parallel in direction, right? Now, there is something called negative vectors, negative vectors, there is something called negative vectors, right? This topic will be clear to you slowly, right? If we give some time to this topic, this will be very clear to us. Negative vectors, if this is a vector A, right? If this is a vector A and say this is a vector B, if this is a vector B, that means the magnitude is same, the magnitude is same, they have the same magnitude, vectors having the same magnitude, but anti-parallel in direction, anti-parallel or opposite in direction in simple words. Anti-parallel in direction are called negative vectors, right? Here A and B are negative vectors because they have the same magnitude, they have the same magnitude, they have the same length and their direction is opposite in this case. And here their direction is same, they are parallel vectors with equal magnitude, so they are called equal vectors, right? And here they are called negative vectors of each other because their magnitude is same and their direction is opposite to each other, right? 
Now, unit vector. There is something called unit vector. Unit vector. A vector whose magnitude is unity, whose magnitude is unity, is called a unit vector, right? A vector having magnitude one is called a unit vector. Now, how to get a unit vector? If we have a vector a, if we have a vector a, and if we divide vector a with the magnitude of vector a, then what remains is the unit vector along vector a, right? If this vector a is of some magnitude, and if we divide the magnitude, we remain only the we remain only with the direction of the vector, which is denoted by this a cap, a cap on the head. Vector a divided by magnitude of vector a gives us the unit vector. This is called the unit vector. This a cap is called the unit vector. Unit vector along the direction of vector a. Right? It has. It is a unit vector. It is a vector having magnitude one. It is a vector having magnitude one and direction is same as that of vector a. Right? So in this way we get the unit vector, right? So by now we learned the definitions of scalars, we learned the definition of vectors, we learned how we represent the vector. We represent a vector using a line segment where this length corresponds to the uh, the length is directly proportional to the magnitude of this vector, magnitude of this vector, and this arrow uh, denotes the direction where it is going, right? This is called the Head point and this is called the tail point, or this is called the terminal point, or this is called the initial point, right? Then we learn the representation of vectors, equal vectors, negative vectors. These are the types of vectors: equal vectors, negative vectors, and then the unit vector, right? This unit vector, the concept of unit vector is very important, right? Or if I simplify this, I can write it as vector a is equal to Modulus of vector a into unit vector a, right? So, if someone asks us how to uh, form a vector, how to form a vector knowing its magnitude, right? How to form a vector knowing its magnitude? So, if we multiply the magnitude of vector, if we multiply the magnitude of vector with the unit vector in the direction of a, then we get the vector a, right? This unit vector a. Has the same direction as that of vector a. Only its magnitude is one. Multiplying it with the magnitude of vector a, we get the vector a, right? So, this concept of unit vector will also be clear to you after some time, right? Though we can understand this, but we will be able to feel it after some time. Now, next, there is. a uh, something called angle between the two vectors angle between the two vectors if this is a vector a if this is a a uh, vector a and this is a vector b If this is a vector a and this is a vector b then if we shift this vector a in such a way in such a way that the tail of vector b coincides with the tail of vector a the tail of vector b coincides with the tail of vector a then the angle between them is called the angle between the two vectors this angle theta is the angle between the two vectors right if we shift this vector a keeping the magnitude same and shift it to Such a place where the tail coincides with the tail of vector b, then the angle between vector a and b is called theta, which is the angle between the two vectors. Right? We'll come back to this again. Now, there is something called null vector. There is something called null vector. Or It can also be called a zero vector, null vector or a zero vector. A vector having magnitude equal to zero, a vector having magnitude zero, having magnitude zero, 
and an indeterminate uh, indeterminate direction indeterminate direction that means an unknown direction which we don't know or we cannot conceptualize the magnitude equal to zero and indeterminate direction a vector of this kind is called a null vector right this concept of null vector is hypothetical though uh, we use this to understand some uh, some results understand some results for example if we add two vectors if we add two vectors of equal magnitude of equal magnitude of opposite sign of opposite direction then what we get is the two vectors cancels out and we get a zero vector right similarly uh, further we will know that there is something called cross product of vectors something called cross product of vectors which is defined as a cross b is equal to ab sin theta sin theta so in this case if we have two parallel vectors if we have two parallel vectors or anti parallel vectors if we need to uh, get the cross product of these two parallel vectors then what we have the, uh, what we have a sin theta is sin 0 or sin 180 which is equal to 0 so in this case again we get a zero vector right so the concept of zero vector is introduced to understand these mathematical results right the addition of two opposite vectors and the cross product of two parallel or anti parallel vectors next invariancy of vector invariancy of vector vectors are invariant vectors are invariant vectors are invariant if shifted parallelly if shifted parallelly to anywhere in space to anywhere in space keeping magnitude same keeping magnitude same vectors are invariant if shifted if shifted parallelly to anywhere in space keeping the magnitude same what i mean is if there is a vector a in this form if there is a vector a in this direction and these vectors uh, are physical quantities which represent different quantities like force velocity acceleration suppose there is a vector a in this direction this vector a may be force vector it may be velocity vector it may be acceleration vector suppose there is a vector a in this direction and if we if we shift this if we shift this vector if we shift this vector anywhere in space keeping the magnitude same then this will be also called the vector a right we can shift this to anywhere in space we can shift this to anywhere in space keeping the magnitude same and the direction same right we can shift this to here also keeping the magnitude same and the direction same right so this means the vectors are invariant if shifted parallelly to anywhere in space keeping magnitude same right we can parallelly shift vectors to anywhere possible in the space right the vectors will not be affected we don't we will not say that the vector has changed it will remain the same uh, if the direction is same right whether it, it it's kept anywhere in the space right the reason behind this is the reason behind this is the vectors when parallelly shifted has no change on the effect produced by that vector right the effect produced by this vector here say this is a force vector say this is a force vector and the effect it produces on this mass m will be same as the effect produced produced by this vector if this mass m was kept here right the effect produced remains the same the effect produced remains the same so we can parallelly shift vectors to anywhere possible right it does not alters the uh, the properties of the vectors right but there may be cases there may be cases where this effect does not remains the same in this case the effect remains the same but for example for example if we uh, open the door if you open the door from different points if i apply the same force at different points then the turning effect will be different right if i move closer to the hinge point then at the hinge point if i apply the same force say 10 newton then the door will not turn right but if that same force up i apply in different positions then the turning effect will be different right so in different situations in different situations 
it matters whether the effect changes or not but unless specified unless specified we assume that the effect remains uh, same and the effect does not changes so we assume in our mind that the vectors are invariant right because in maximum cases the vectors are invariant there may be some cases where it is uh, not variant but unless it's specified we assume that it is invariant so we can parallelly shift vectors to anywhere possible right this concept is very important to understand that we can parallelly shift vectors to anywhere possible now going back into the angle between two vectors angle between vectors angle between vectors i told that the angle between two vectors is the angle uh, is the angle uh, produced by them when they are joined from tail to tail when they are joined from tail to tail right there may be situations where we need to figure out the angle between the two vectors where we need to figure out the angle between two vectors so to make you understand how we do this we use the invariancy property of vector we use the invariancy property of vector and in different situations uh we uh get the uh, angle between the th these two vectors we conceptualize the angle between these two vectors for example if i take some situations say if these are two vectors and this is the angle theta here this is vector a say this is vector b say and someone ask you to find out what is the angle between these two vectors a and b right so what we need to do is we parallelly need to shift this down we need to shift this vector down and we need to shift this vector towards the right in such a way that the tails coincide the tails coincide and we know that parallel shifting of vectors is possible we can parallel shift vectors in this way and in this way without changing the magnitude without changing the magnitude this length is equal to this length and this length is equal to this length so we shifted in such a way that the tails coincide and now the angle produced by them is called the angle between the two vectors right so this will be same as the theta right opposite angles so the angle between these two vectors will remain theta only in another case in another case say if this is a vector a if this is a vector a and if this is a vector a and say this is a vector this is a vector b and let's say this angle is theta let's say this angle is theta now here if we need to conceptualize what is the angle between vector a and vector b what we need to do is we uh, we shift vector a towards the right in such a way that the magnitude remains the same and the direction remains the same and now the tails coincide and this will be the angle phi which where phi will be pi minus theta here this pi minus theta will be the angle between the two vectors right so in this way we need to shift vectors we need to shift vectors in different cases and we need to make sure that the tails of the two vectors coincide the tails of the two vectors coincide.